Hello there, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm going to be talking to you on two different occasions and I'd like to link my talks together because I want to talk to you today about a man called John Bunyan who was born in Bedford, a place called Harrodon, uh, down near Bedford in 1628. So it's a long time ago. Uh, he died in London in 1688, he's 59 when he died. And he has been an outstanding writer. But I want to tell you a little bit of his background. And by doing that, I want to share with you the message that he believed with all his heart and a message that I believe with all my heart. And I know that the Christians that I'm preparing this for believe as well. And he believed the Bible. He didn't always believe the Bible. His father, Bunyan's father, was actually a metal worker, a tinker, you would have called him, who, meant, who mended pots and pans. And the Bunyan family had been living in Bedfordshire um, since at least the 12th century. They gradually lost more and more of their land and had become quite poor. John Bunyan's father actually inherited a small cottage and nine acres of land. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, but he could mend pots. Now, there was a lot of fighting going on in England at that time when Bunyan was a child. Many people were against the king, who was King Charles I, and so there was a civil war, uh, and the king was executed. Now, for several years, England was a republic ruled by Oliver Cromwell. My daughter lives in Ely, and if you went to Ely, you would see the house that Cromwell lived in. Now, John, back to John Bunyan, the son, uh, in this story. He only went to school for two or three years, maybe four at the most. He learned how to be a tinker by watching his father's trade. But when he was 16, he, he decided he was going to serve in the parliamentary army. Now that was based at Newport Pagnell. And that was for three years, 1644 to 1647. After that, he started to work as a tinker. He, he married in 1649. Now, his wife had two books. Uh, both were religious. Bibles were not as freely available in those days as they are today. Now, that was a real shame. And if you have a Bible, please read it. Because the Bible says about itself in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're privileged in our society to have full access to the Bible and to be able to read it, faith in God comes by hearing the word of God. So you need to read the Bible to hear God's message, or at least the scripture needs to be brought to you, which is the responsibility of Christians, which is what we're doing on this, this, this video. So I suppose a good question to think about at the moment is, do you have much respect for the Bible? What does it mean to you? Have you read it? Has it got any significance in your life? And I would suggest to you it's a very, very important book. Uh, you probably guessed that when you look at my library sitting there behind me, uh, what I believe about the Bible. Now, Bunyan started that stage in his life to be influenced by religion. He actually became frightened because he realised that things that he'd done were wrong. His conscience was stirred. Now, the Bible tells us that we've all got a conscience that distinguishes between right and and wrong. God has given us that so that we would understand right from wrong. So when the Bible talks about sin, when the Bible talks about wrong, we kind of understand what it's talking about even if we haven't read the Bible because we understand the guilt of doing wrong and the pleasure of doing right. We understand that we have a moral compass, we have a, an inbuilt awareness of right and wrong. So your conscience either excuses you or accuses you. Now, you can deaden that. You can work at it so that you don't feel guilt. But naturally speaking, you have a conscience and often people work to, to kind of deaden that. So he, he, he wondered because he felt frightened whether God would forgive him. He wondered if he would go to heaven when he died. He wondered whether he'd be punished, whether he would go to hell. And, and the, the kind of things that he did at that time, they were wrong. They maybe wouldn't worry you today because they were religious things that maybe we wouldn't kind of just um, think about too much. For instance, it was it was wrong um, to, to ring church bells in those days, which we would think was a crazy rule. It was wrong to go dancing or to play games on Sunday. 
But there are some things that we would still say were wrong, and I would suggest to you that's because we base them on the Bible. Not only do we have a conscience, but God has given us his, his word, and that the scriptures are able to make us wise unto salvation. That means they inform us about the need to have forgiveness. They inform us about the reason why we feel guilty. The scriptures are able to make us wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So one of the things that he was very uh, felt very guilty about was his bad language, his, his swearing and his cursing. And the Bible does say that we shouldn't lie and we shouldn't blaspheme. We shouldn't bear false witness. That we, we shouldn't use language that is, is uh, blasphemous and that is abusive. Well, other wrongs that he'd done included disrespecting his parents. Um, maybe uh, he actually felt that he had helped the early death of his sister. And this he did by refusing to take on any of her workload, any of the burden that she carried. And it, he he spent his time. Now, this part of it, is, you probably think, is far removed from your world. Maybe not. I don't know who's listening uh, and watching this video. But he spent a lot of his time uh, with prostitutes uh, and he was in, involved in a whole lot of stuff like gambling and, and things that were really um, not good and sinful. So he's afraid. I want to ask you the question now at this stage. Are you afraid? I know a lot of people in our society say they're not afraid. They don't feel any guilt. Uh, they don't think there's a God to meet. I pray that God would awaken your conscience because the reality is you're heading for danger and the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible indicates the wages of sin is death and, and that we will die. And there's a day of judgment. So we would be wise to be afraid. And we would be wise to understand that we're sinners. Listen to what Psalm 9 says. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked are snared or trapped in the works of their own hands. It goes on to say, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now, wicked to us means the grossly evil. Wicked in the Bible means people who have rejected God. It includes the grossly evil, but it, it, it covers everybody. People who've disrespected God, blasphemed God, don't believe it exists. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and the nations that forget God. Now, by the way, God is no great joy in consigning us to hell. In fact, we consign ourselves. If I take the words of C.S. Lewis, he said that people either say to God, thy will be done, or they say to God, my will be done. And if we refuse God, then God has no option but to exclude us from heaven because we don't want him. We don't want his presence. We don't want his principles. We don't want his forgiveness. So God prepared a place for the devil and for fallen angels that sadly will be occupied for eternity by those who don't want God or forgiveness. So today you could get saved. Today you could know peace with God. But there's a bit of reality needs to take place to understand the brevity of life and why we exist. There's a God who created us and we're morally, morally responsible to him and to realise that he sent his son to our world to die for us so that we might have forgiveness and peace with God. The Bible says the way of life is above to the wise, that he may be depart from hell beneath. Now, when Bunyan became a Christian, we've not got to that stage now, but when he became a Christian, he wrote a book amongst many, one very famous book, which I'll talk to you about, and I'm going to space my next message on that book. But he wrote another book called Grace Abounding. And in it, he describes himself as the chief of sinners. He uses the words from 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 in the, this, this passage from the Bible. Uh, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Now if you've just seen a little blip in the video I do apologize for that. I forgot to put my phone onto um, whatever they call it, silent or, or not available. So please excuse me for that. If I can edit out, I will do. But if I can't, then, then please uh, forgive me for that one. So this man, John Bunyan, described himself as the chief of sinners. And he says he believed that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I wonder how you see yourself. I wonder how you imagine yourself to be. 
Do you see yourself as God sees you? Or do you see yourself just um, the way you assess things yourself, ignoring what God has revealed in the Bible? Uh, he tells one day about walking along and he heard a group of women talking to one another about salvation. And it made him think about these things. It made him aware of the fact that there's the possibility of being forgiven, that God took action by sending his son into the world. Uh, and, and some of the verses from the Bible that became real to him in later life were Romans chapter 10, verse 10. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. Man trusts God and God makes him right. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You confess Jesus as Lord. Realise that he's the son of God and that he suffered and died for you. Confession is made unto salvation. He also became very aware of what was going on in his heart. He didn't understand at the time. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't realise why you feel guilty, why you feel convicted, why there's a, a burden to deal with this. But the Bible says godly sorrow results in works in repentance to salvation. In other words, sorrow that is real and takes you away from your sin produces repentance, which literally just means to turn away, change your direction and brings you to salvation, faith in the Lord Jesus. He also learned from the Bible in Hebrews chapter 2 that it says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. The Bible is saying that, that there is no other option. God is the creator. He made us. He gave us life. He gave Adam and Eve life. He gave them the rules. They broke the simple instruction that was given to them. They brought sin and death into the world and that infected the human race. But God has by in his kindness and grace sent his son Jesus Christ to the world so that we could be forgiven. So he took our punishment. He suffered and died being the sinless one. He bore our sins in his body on that cross. And if we turn to him, he can forgive us because he has cleared the guilt to provide us with salvation. But if we refuse that offer, there's no other option. Religion, good living, just being a nice person doesn't make the grade doesn't doesn't solve these things well let's go back to his story in those days people were supposed to worship god in the church of england there were however groups of people who wanted to worship god in different ways they were called non non nonconformists in 1653 a religious group had taken over a church called st john's church in bedford and the man who was their vicar was john gifford bunyan used to go and discuss the bible a lot with John Gifford and Bunyan got saved that's why that verse this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief became real to him God forgave him he realized that Jesus died and rose from the dead and lives to save and he trusted him and he realized that he could believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved so so could you now, he was living at this stage in a place called Elstow near Bedford. And he moved to Bedford itself to be nearer to Gifford's church. And in 1659, he, four years later, he married again. And he began to preach. But he, he didn't preach in churches. Now, it was illegal to preach in any other location apart from a church. But he would go and he would be, preach in barns, he would preach in the streets, he would preach in fields. And because he didn't have permission to preach, he was arrested and put in jail. At first, he, he was sentenced to three months. But because he refused to stop preaching, he spent 12 years in jail. Now, Bedford Old Bridge was the town jail. He probably spent his first uh, jail sentence in the county jail. But then after he was put in the town jail in 1677, uh, it was a bit strange in those days because you were allowed to go out at times, even though you were in prison. He, he probably would have been free at any time to leave jail if he'd promised to give up preaching. But he refused because he so believed in the gospel and believed in salvation. He made shoelaces in prison to get some money to feed himself because you, you didn't get food in prison. 
His daughter Mary was blind, brought him soup every day and gave him books to read. And at times it seemed as if he was let out for short periods. It was possibly not really allowed, but often the guards would let them go out if they promised to come back. He travelled as far as London on one of those occasions and he must have gone home because he had two children by his second wife during that time. But it was in, during that period in jail that Bunyan wrote a book that has become a world famous bestseller. It's an allegorical novel. It's called Pilgrim's Progress. We don't know whether he wrote it all when he was in jail. It's in two parts. And he finishes the part, first part with the words, So I awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And when the second part starts, he writes this, As I slept, I dreamt again. So it might have been that he was back in jail. Now, I'm going to talk to you next week, or next time this is broadcast, uh, about Pilgrim's Progress, because it's a great picture of how a person comes to God and to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to just remind you of a couple of verses as I close that I've been talking to you about today. Number one is this, Romans chapter 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want to get saved, if you want to be a Christian, if you want to have faith in God, you need to listen to God's word. Second one is this, the scriptures, that is the Bible, the writings of scripture, are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Another verse that I brought to your attention was this, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So God sent his son to die on a cross to pay for our sin so that we could be forgiven. My last one is this, how do you become a Christian? Well, you need to repent. That means turn away from your sin, turn to God, turn from your old beliefs, turn to afresh to God and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him, rely upon what he did on the cross. And the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. We trust that God would bless you today. If you've got questions, please go on to the uh, website, do contact the folks uh, who have posted this and, and we trust that God would bless you through his word today. Thanks again for listening.